which uh, which can be either configured as a positive edge triggered or negative edge triggered depending on the clock pulse which we which we offer for our flip flop and every uh, deep flip flop is having the capability to store and uh, propagate either logic 1 or 0 according to the input it is attached with the multiplexer and as we all know it is considered to be a 2 is to 1 multiplexer so obviously two inputs here is considered to be one is scan in si stands for scan in data and here d is the normal input which we deliver so at one instant of time either si meaning scan in will be carry forwarded at its output q sorry it will be carry forwarded at its output q or the d will be propagated to output q so what happens is for the initial flip flop either scan in will be propagated so the output is the output is fed over here likewise the output is fed over here so the output of each and every uh, flip flop is fed as an input for the next multiplexer so in this fashion my output my scanning will take place either by taking an si data for the overall module or in other words based on the control input my d will be propagated so this kind of uh, scan based approach is possible but the greatest disadvantage in this design is that for loading either the scan in data or the d for the first four uh, uh, d flip flop we are in need of eight clock pulses we are in need of eight clock pulses so eight clock pulses are mandatory for loading the data either si or d and likewise the same eight clock pulses clock pulses has to be offered for deloading the data so it is going to be uh, time consuming so which can be easily overcome by uh, uh, parallel scan based testing here parallel scan based testing is the one wherein each and every register is associated with its own right uh, control signal data data right row axis and column axis so this module will let you know uh, for the for simple case we have just mentioned only a single uh, d flip flop but multiple d flip flops can be incorporated inside my system which have a provision of individual row axis and column axis so simultaneously all the registers are able to uh, get the address and get the control signal for writing the data onto it or reading the data so in this way uh, time consumption is greatly reduced in parallel scanning so you can just draw the diagram and state the advantages and disadvantages as far as this particular topic is concerned thank you for listening So good morning all. Uh, in turn, in continuation with the previous session, uh, ground wave propagation. Now we have a, uh, a discussion on the reflection by the ground. We have will see the effect of the reflection that is made by the ground for the propagation. So as we know, in case of a ground wave propagation, our wave is going to reach the receiver either in a direct way if it, if both the antennas are in line of sight communication. So that wave may directly. Uh, reach the destination or it may reach the destination through reflection by the gray by the ground why because uh, we know that uh, in ground wave propagation my wave is going to glide over that is it is going to travel along the surface of the ground so there might be chances of getting reflection by the ground surface so we need to see how much reflection is going to take place uh, for a electromagnetic wave that we are going to see it today uh, it is a continuation for uh, uh, from the 
ground wave propagation now we are going to see the effect of ground reflection by the expression derivation of reflection that is the plane wave plane earth reflection plane earth reflection in this we are going to plane earth reflection here we are going to see the relation of uh, how the signal is getting reflected by the ground surface and how it is having impact on the wave propagation along the ground surface uh, first let us consider a transmission system where the antenna transmitting and receiving antennas are uh, placed above the ground surface it is a air surface here the transmitting antenna is placed over here at the height of hc similarly consider there is a receiving antenna at the other end of the earth surface which is located which is elevated at the height of hr okay from the transmitter to receiver the wave either it may reach in a direct way if it is a line of sight communication because they can face each other so it is a direct way okay so otherwise the signal may reach the destination that is the receiver through reflected way so the way may reach uh, in a direct way or it may be travel through to the receiver through reflected way so consider so this is the angle which is making to the uh, plane ang uh, plane angle psi 1 and this one is uh, phi 2 sorry this one is phi 2 and this one is phi 1 and consider the angle with the incident angle that is making to the ground surface to the vertical surf vertical line that is the normal line as theta here theta is the incident angle to the normal line to the ground surface so so by considering this diagram we are going to derive the expression for the reflection that is made by the ground surface to the reflected signal okay uh, from this diagram we can conclude the total field that is received by the receiving antenna can be written as received received energy is the combination of both direct wave and reflected wave so the total energy that is received at the receiving antenna will be direct direct wave energy plus reflected wave energy so the so next uh, we have to consider the practical conditions of uh, ground reflection surface since uh, we assume that our the earth is a flat and a smooth surface it is a assumption but practically it is not a smooth surface it will have irregularities over the uh, earth surface so we have to consider uh, the actual uh, practical conditions of our earth surface if we consider our earth is a smooth finite conductor if this be the case okay my signal will get uh, reflected by the ground surface but it will differ from the direct wave because the in, in direct wave your signal will reach the receiver through line of sight communication so that no changes will be experienced by the direct wave but your if your signal is getting reflected by a ground surface that signal will be altered in magnitude as well phase since uh your your electromagnetic wave is getting reflected by the ground surface its magnitude and phase of the signal is altered okay so when at the receiver side when you receive direct wave and the reflected wave both will differ in amplitude as well as in phase if this is if this is for the condition of assuming our earth is a smooth flat surface so but practically my earth is not a smooth conductor it is having irregularities as we know so this irregularity if it is severe irregularity between the transmitting and receiving antenna your signal is getting scattered because my earth is a rough surface it is having so much of irregularity when the signal is incident on the irregularity it is getting scattered in all the direction so that the final resultant signal reaching the receiver will be very low in amplitude and as compared to the direct wave okay so that is due to the reflection uh, that is actually here the reflection becomes scattering when the surface is not a smooth one irregular and a rough surface okay so
so that here the crucial factor that is going to impact on ground wave propagation is the reflection that is made by the ground whether it is going to have a smooth reflection or a rough uh, reflection if it is a rough reflection it will be a scattered signal the resultant signal will be very very low compared to the direct wave so that is a point that we should remember here and then uh, now we need to consider the roughness factor how much it is getting uh, deviated from the flat surface so instead of having a flat surface practical cases where we have irregularities how much it is getting deviated okay that is that particular variation will be uh, defined by the parameter called roughness of the earth roughness it will tell you how much it is getting irregular in your in the surface of earth so roughness r is represented by r equal to 4 pi sigma into sin theta divided by lambda so this is the factor which is going to tell you the roughness uh, level of your air surface between the transmitting and receiving antenna so this variation will be defined by the parameter r that is the roughness where sigma is representing the conductivity of the earth surface and uh, theta is the incident angle to the ground surface incident angle and lambda is the operating wavelength that is the electromagnetic wave which is traveling between the antenna having a specific wavelength so this is the factor as i told you um, by calculating the value for the roughness so typically if the value of the roughness is less than 0 0.1 that will come uh, that will tell you that uh, the reflecting surface is a smooth one if the roughness value is above above greater than 10 then it is a rough surface where scattering will take place this is the conclusion that we can uh, get from the expression and the typical values given here uh, but the practical case our we have considered we have considered our earth is a flat surface which is uh, assumed as a smooth surface but practically as i told you uh, it is not a smooth surface it is having ir irregularity over the entire distance between the antennas again another issue is uh, my earth is not a uh, earth is usually assumed as a dielectric and conductor also usually it is assumed as a conductor as well dielectric but practically it is not a it is not a perfect conductor not a perfect conductor and not a perfect dielectric too we have considered this uh, particular representation uh, why because if it is not a perfect dielectric it will have a dielectric loss Similarly, if it is not a perfect conductor, it will cause some signal loss while propagation that is taking place between the antenna. Okay, so since this is the practical case, we are going to employ, we are going to experience some amount of signal loss due to not a perfectness of your conductivity and dielectric property of the uh, earth surface. So for this, uh, in order to understand it clearly, we need to derive some mathematical expression which is going to tell us how much of the surface roughness is going to affect the wave propagation the reflection is going to contribute part of the signal reception at the receiver so we need to uh, we need to analyze the reflection that is made by the ground so in order to do the analysis we are going to do some mathematical expression analysis uh, for uh, roughness consider consider maxwell's equation maxwell's equation for medium since we have considered earth reflection here the earth is not going to have a perfect dielectricness and perfect conductivity so for this condition that is for a medium since here my earth is a medium that medium is going to have conductivity sigma and permittivity epsilon for this kind of medium my maxwell's equation is giving the relationship that is del cross h equal to j current density j plus uh, do d by dou t so this is the maxwell's equation, which, uh, equation for the medium which is having electric conductivity and uh, dielectricity of the medium so conductivity uh, this electric current density i can write it as uh, 
sigma e sigma is the conductivity of the medium and then this can be written as epsilon into dou e by dou t so this particular expression it is actually the equation 2 is derived from equation 1 by the condition of assuming my wave is getting propagating in a sinusoidal manner when you consider time varying behavior you can write it like this because your electric field is going to vary with respect to time because of that i have just replaced some uh, this term by means of this because my wave is getting traveling in a sinusoidal manner which is varying with respect to time so i have derived this and then So when you consider the conductivity over the earth surface, this F permittivity now depends on the elect uh, permittivity that is the di dielectric property of your earth. So to represent that I am here representing this epsilon that as uh, a, new, a new parameter which is associated with the permittivity of your earth medium. So that this epsilon can be written as sorry epsilon dash can be written as epsilon plus sigma by j omega this particular permittivity parameter is meant for the ground reflected surface so as you can see this uh, this is the, this depends on the permittivity of the medium plus the conductivity since my earth is the combination of dielectric and conductivity so it is contributing both conductivity sigma and permittivity epsilon which is the complex quantity as i can see it is having a real part and imaginary port so my epsilon dash is a complex quantity so now we have come to know that my uh, earth is going to provide some conductivity plus some dielectric property so i will just get the relation for uh, the conductivity and the permittivity now we are going to derive the reflection coefficient for different uh, waves because my signal is getting uh, generated at the transmitting antenna it is getting reflected by the ground surface and it is reaching the receiving antenna for this case for this case your signal either may have a horizontal polarized signal or it may be a vertically polarized signal uh, polarization as you know uh, as you can recollect from the previous unit that the polarization is a electric field orientation between the wave propagation when you have the polarized electric field strength along the vertical direction it is a vertical polarization and if it is horizontal nature it will be a horizontal polarization for both the cases of polarization we are going to have uh, the reflection coefficient the reflection coefficients for horizontal and vertical polarizations are given by r h equal to uh, square root of epsilon 1 cos theta minus square root of epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 sin square theta divided by epsilon 1 cos theta plus epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 sin square theta this is for horizontal polarized signals reflectivity and the another expression for vertical polarized signal is uh, epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 into cos theta minus square root of epsilon 2 minus sorry epsilon 2 divided by epsilon 1 minus sin square theta divided by epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 into cos theta plus square root of epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 into minus sin square theta so this is the expression for reflectivity of your uh, vertically polarized signal so for this uh, two expression we need to substitute the permittivity condition since epsilon 1 is meant for the transmitting antenna side uh, dielectric constant and epsilon 2 is for ground reflected signal epsilon 1 is the direct wave permittivity and epsilon 2 is the reflected wave dielectric permittivity okay we need to consider the conditions here as you can see your wave is your both transmitting and receiving antennas are elevated from the ground it is place over the air medium so the signal that is getting emitted by the transmitting antenna is emitted in a medium called free space so that the free space permittivity will be epsilon naught okay so first we'll consider the uh, horizontal polarized reflectivity so before 
writing that expression we will substitute we will consider the permittivity medium as i told you the signal is getting originated from the free space so epsilon 1 can be replaced by epsilon 0 which is a free space permittivity since my antenna is transmitting the wave in a free space so this can be replaced by epsilon 0 similarly uh, medium 2 when your wave is getting reflected by the uh, ground okay here earth permittivity should be considered so that epsilon 2 is i can write it as epsilon dash that is equal to epsilon plus sigma by j omega this we are deriving from the expression from here epsilon dash okay and then we know from the diagram so this is the angle uh, psi 2 so which is uh, where we know that uh, theta is the incident angle to the ground so this phi phi 2 and uh, theta can be uh, interrelated by so theta can be written as 90 minus psi 2 or psi 2 can be written as 90 minus theta okay so when you consider this when you consider this sin psi can be written as sin 90 minus when you substitute this so you can substitute 90 minus theta this can be written as cos theta similarly if you want uh, cos psi cos 90 minus theta you can write it as sin theta so by assuming these conditions uh, we substitute all these things in uh, equation number 3 so to get reflected that is the horizontal reflection coefficient which can be written as square epsilon 1 should be replaced by epsilon naught square root of epsilon naught cos theta cos theta can be replaced by cos theta can be replaced by sin psi so directly i'll do that so sin psi minus square root of epsilon 2 consider epsilon 2 epsilon 2 is should be replaced by epsilon plus sigma by j omega epsilon this is contrib contributed by the ground reflection that's dielectric constant so epsilon plus sigma by j omega minus and then my epsilon 1 is epsilon naught into sin square theta sin theta can be written as cos phi okay so that this can be written as cos phi of phi that's it okay this is the numerator part similarly for denominator part epsilon naught sin psi only changes the sign that is existing between the two terms so square root of epsilon by j omega minus epsilon naught cos square psi this is the expression phi okay So when I take this uh, square root of epsilon naught uh, into the term, we can write uh, so R H equal to sin psi minus square root of epsilon. Epsilon, when this get into the square root term, this will become epsilon by epsilon naught plus sigma by j omega epsilon naught. Okay, this one minus epsilon naught, and when it comes here, it will cancel out. So cos square psi. Similarly, sin psi minus square root of plus sigma by j omega epsilon minus cos square. So this is the exponent number six. Okay, I'll repeat the substitution procedure here. We are consider the horizontal uh, reflection coefficient and vertical reflection coefficient. Um, since the first medium is the free space, and the second medium where your wave is getting reflected by the ground, so it is con uh, considering the permittivity and conductivity of your ground medium. So that it gets the expression epsilon plus sigma by j omega. So, and then uh, the incident angle is related with the plane angle, phi 2 and theta. So, that uh, this can be written as theta is 
90 minus z2 or z2 equal to 90 minus theta. So <coughs> when you substitute this in the horizontal reflection coefficient, so epsilon 1 is replaced by epsilon naught and epsilon 2 is replaced by epsilon plus sigma by j omega and then uh, theta is here replaced by psi. Sin theta means it is a cos phi. If it is a cos phi, it is a sin theta. Okay, so I have just substituted here. I have taken the square root of epsilon naught term inside the second term. When you take that, finally you will get the expression like this. So we will continue with the last expression. Okay, uh, for simplification, we will consider epsilon by epsilon naught as epsilon r. This we know that the permittivity of the medium equal to relative permittivity multiplied by free space permittivity. So that you will get the total permittivity of the medium. So epsilon by epsilon naught equal to epsilon naught. Similarly, for my simplification purpose, I am going to take uh, sigma by j omega epsilon naught as x. Okay, so these two substitution I am going to make it for uh, extra, final expression. So the reflection coefficient, horizontal reflection coefficient R H equal to when you write the expression for this sin psi minus square root of first term will become epsilon R minus this entire term. Now I can write it like a x. So x. Sorry, here you can write it. Uh, so you can take sigma by omega epsilon naught as x. So uh, when you write like that, it will become. Yes, it will become epsilon or minus jx into minus cos for your side divided by sin psi minus square root of epsilon or minus jx minus cos for your side. So this is the final expression which is related with the relative permittivity of the medium and the angle which is making uh, that is the, your incident wave that is making to the plane air. That is what psi. So initially it was related with the incident angle. Now it is re related with the plane angle which is the ground surface angle. That is psi. So similarly by doing the same substitutions what you have done for the horizontal polarization. We can write the expression for a vertical polarized signal reflectivity. Rv equal to epsilon r minus jx into sin psi minus square root of epsilon r minus jx minus cos square psi divided by epsilon r minus jx into sin psi plus square root of epsilon r minus jx minus cos square psi. So this is the expression for Vertically polarized signals reflectivity. So, so we have written the final expression which is relating your relative permittivity of the medium with the plane angle of the ground reflected signal. So when you do that, finally we are achieving the horizontal signals reflectivity and vertical signals reflectivity. So as you can see from the final expression, it is con consisting of both real terms and imaginary terms. Okay. So the, the, these two expression can be finalized, uh, can be easily represented by real part of, uh, real part of horizontal polarized wave with magnitude and vertically polarized signal is a combination of real part of vertically polarized signal and ma phase of which is a complex quantity consisting of both amplitude and phase since the final expression is containing imaginary terms and real terms uh, as well. So, 
simply we can write the final expressions as real part and imaginary parts of the reflectivities of both horizontal and vertically polarized signals so we'll conclude by uh, summarizing what we have seen today uh, we have considered the plane at reflection since we are dealing with the ground wave propagation your signal is going to glide over the earth surface so when it is traveling along the uh, surface of the earth it gets reflected by the ground surface because of that reflection uh, as we know the signal may reach the receiving antenna either in a direct way or getting reflected by the ground surface so when it is going as a direct way so there is no issue at all because it is going to reach as it is but when it is getting reflected by the ground surface here your wave is getting interacted with the ground but ground is not a perfect conductor as we know similarly it is not also a perfect dielectric so it is going to contribute some amount of loss so when the signal is getting reflected by any surface the magnitude and phase of the signal will get altered okay so the receiver the total received signal will be direct signal and re uh, reflected one so, uh, by considering the practical scenarios of our earth surface we have to do some modification in the general expression we have considered maxwell's equation for uh, the reflection impact on the electromagnetic wave propagation we have considered maxwell's equation which is having dielectricity plus conductivity both parameters so we have considered del cross h equal to j plus uh, do d by do uh, t so from that expression we have derived we have taken the relationship of electric field intensity d is uh, epsilon e because the permittivity here is a matter so electric field intensity d is replaced by epsilon into e so we have started with that we have to consider we have considered two cases one is the uh, free space permittivity when it is interacting with the earth there will be a medium permittivity that is epsilon okay we have considered two cases we have we have considered the reflection coefficients uh, of both horizontally polarized signal and vertically polarized signal finally um, the cases we have considered here free space permittivity is replaced by epsilon not and our medium permittivity epsilon 2 is replaced by earth permittivity and conductivity this is a complex quantity and uh, we have related the incident angle with plane angle psi so when you do that finally we can derive the we have to substitute all the assumptions here and we have to substitute in the reflection coefficient coefficient expression finally we have derived and we have summarized with the reflection coefficients for both horizontal polarization and vertical polarization thank you
good morning uh, today we will start with 